Hello and welcome to episode 41 of the Motivational Millennial Podcast. We have a great conversation with Robbie today. He is an international energy healer and hip-hop artist. And if that isn't cool enough, he shares with us his great transformational story from being a collegiate athlete. So stay tuned for that and stick around afterward when Blake and I will share our biggest takeaways. And right before that... There's going to be a crazy freestyle, so don't miss out either. Oh, yeah, Whoa. don't forget about that. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Motivational Millennial Podcast, where we talk with inspiring members of the millennial generation who are living life with a sense of purpose and achieving their dreams. I'm Blake Brandis. And I'm Ivy LeClaire. Our Motivational Millennial guest today is Robbie. Robbie has gone from being a collegiate athlete to a snowboard instructor, to a commissioned visual artist, to a yoga instructor, and most recently, to an international energy healer, creative coach, and hip-hop artist. Robbie combines all these facets into offering his art as a gift to the world while supporting those who are dedicated to taking their lives to the next level. His new hip-hop mixtape, Golden Bars, was just released, and I personally have been playing it nonstop over the past week. So, Robbie, welcome to the show. (laughs) Yeah, thanks so much, Blake. Great to be here. Blake and Ivy, yeah, stoked to be here. Awesome. Well, we'd love to hear what you are up to at the moment. And from that intro, I know it sounds like you've got a lot going on. So we'd love to hear what you're up to at the moment and why you're so passionate about it. Sure, yeah, happy to dive in. So really, fortunately, you know, that was kind of an extended intro right there. Some of the things I've been up to, but I'd say all of those have inspired me and and really cultivated what feels like just two specific paths and that's really just my music specifically hip-hop and everything that's involved in that as well as the coaching work that i bring to people so you know all those experiences everything i've done i feel like in the past has really it's been helpful to really let them solidify into these two different areas right now so those are the two specific focuses and there's a lot happening within each of those but you know, compartmentalize. Those are really the two focuses that I'm working with right now. And why am I passionate about it, right? I guess I can start here. It's a blessing to be alive. (laughs) Straight up. You know, I feel that every day when I wake up, I have that sense of connection to that, that this is a gift. You know, this is an opportunity. Every day is an opportunity and it's a gift. And, you know, recognizing the things that have inspired and influenced me immensely to have a life that I feel of, of purpose and connection. It's like the opportunity to feed into that loop, that, that greater web, that network that is, that's, that I've been, you know, so much a recipient of, to be able to bring my, you know, what's coming through me into the world and to the people that I connect with and touch in all different ways. It's like, what an opportunity. So it's kind of like, I feel like I'm just awake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awake to, to the, you know, the blessing that life is. And because of that, it, it motivates me every day to, you know, really just take everything I'm doing further. And how did you come to that state of awakeness? Could you take us a little bit into your journey to that place? Sure. Yeah, I'd say that I've had some excellent mentors along the way of people. When I looked at them, when I looked at what they're up to in their life, when I looked at the sense of, I'd say almost connection, personal connection, and I say greater connection to how they interpret the world around them, how they see their place in it, and then how they conduct their life based on that. You know, and I just really gravitated to this type of person. And there's there's been a number of people along my path that I'm like, what? <laughs> Ultimately, like, what secrets of the universe do you know about that I don't yet? <laughs> I want to know, you know? So I feel like I've been really blessed to be able to work closely with a lot of different people, even starting with, like, say, my grandfather, you know, like someone I respect greatly. He's passed on right now. But I was like, he's, he's got a couple, he's got some keys to life right here. He's just doing something right. You know, there's the art to being able to, say, cultivate a craft or really bring something that you work on diligently daily into the world. And then there's the art of fulfillment. And if they're not working hand in hand, then I feel like, you know, something's really lost in that process. So, you know, I guess you could say it's been a gradual but turn to full on kind of obsession. Like what what is the art of fulfillment and art of like really living all about? You know, just to, to come back together with, with a couple of those thoughts, like having people who I feel like are really doing that in their own way and getting to recognize, like, what are the key elements of what they're up to? And then what does that mean to me? How does it relate to my life? You know, and this is what the current version looks like. So was there a time early on when you 
saw this vision or were opened up to this vision that more is possible, that's art of fulfillment. I'm wondering if there was sort of a turning point in your life or has this just been a gradual process all the way through? I'd say it's definitely been an integral and gradual process. If it were to be pinpointed in a moment, you know, I think just losing people, like having people die and cross over and recognizing the ephemeral aspects of life and how that's so real. We're born with that ticket. And so, you know, I lost my best friend at 27 years old and witnessing that and being like, wow, okay, his whole lifetime, that was it. I can like look at that entire piece right there. And so, you know, all these different parts along the way and recognizing, you know, some genuine aspects of, I'd say, like I said, different mentors that I've studied with and worked with, and then just personal experience. I mean, like, wow, this is, we really don't know how much time we have here. So let's make the most of it. (laughs) So what are a couple of those aspects that you mentioned noting in your mentors? I'd say um, a couple different sides. Yeah, there's a number of ways I guess I can approach this. But one, they're deeply steeped in what their particular passion is. So for instance, a yoga teacher that I studied with in India, he studies traditional tantra yoga and that's his path. That's what he knows inside and out. He's so disciplined and dedicated in the art of that whole lineage. So it's not only that, and then it's like the practical part of sharing it and teaching that. I really see that as a full circle part of, you know, what do you practice on your own? What is purely your practice and what you're cultivating as an individual? And then the full circleness of how do you bring that out to benefit the lives of others? And I'd say that those are common threads that run through people that I've witnessed and then studied with, that they've had their own sense of personal realization and, and dedication and practice. And they're really sharp, they can be finding an incredible skill set. And then, you know, because that's so deeply integrated, it's just natural to be able to have your cup overflowing and have that touch and influence, you know, and upgrade the lives of others. So I'd say that's a common thread in there. Could you take us a little bit on your own journey of starting out as a collegiate athlete? I'm just I'm so curious on how you ended up in this coach and hip hop artist and energy healing space from that, from those days. Yeah, it's definitely been a a stretch. (laughs) (laughs) You know, what I really love and reflecting back is that I'm like, where's the common points that overlap? Because they can all seem like really vastly different ways of focusing energy, right? From being on a soccer field and bringing that, you know, for four years and, you know, what is it to like snowboard and get my best there? But really it's like, what do I feel most alive about? And that feeling has been synonymous through all these different ways of expressing, you know, what I do in the world. And so for a while, it was like soccer field was my place. It was like my dojo, you know, it was my place of challenge, my place of personal growth, my place of connection, the place where I could exponentially learn more about who I was. And those aspects like that then translated to the slopes in Colorado. What is potential in the visionary scape of seeing a potential and then doing it and actualizing it, you know, that's been a big common thread through I think all these things that we're speaking to, specifically music too, and, you know, the healing arts that has its own kind of point of awakening, you know, in that realm right there. But but ultimately it's like I feel so inspired by this particular medium that I'm just gonna give myself to it. And through that, I'm gaining so much. I've taught and coached soccer. I've taught and coached snowboarding. You know, so in the coaching realms, I've really always worked with people in those closed containers. And so this is another way, you know, what I'm bringing forth now in my coaching is like, yeah, of course, kind of been a coach for for quite some time in my adult life. I love that you mentioned really enjoying seeing a vision and actually realizing that vision. And I'm wondering, what was the first time that you had this vision, realized it, and then was like, oh my gosh, this is really great. I want to rinse and repeat for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. Rinse and repeat. Continue that on. I'd say that, you know, as I was mentioning from, from about age 12 to 21, I was playing soccer year round. And in those younger years, there was a tryout that I heard about. So I was just playing for a club team in my hometown, Rockaway, New Jersey. And um, it was just like, you know, if you were a kid in town, you learned, you like kind of like made your way onto the team and did it. But, uh, you know, I recognized I had some skills in that area and, you know, was cultivating them. But I heard about this tryout that was happening, which was, it was for the ODP team, which is the Olympic Development Program. And I went to that tryout being like, what do I have to lose? You know, but I was kind of a nobody. And I say that humbly because 
everyone else who was there was playing on these kind of elite club teams and kind of knew each other they had way cooler clothes than me like coming in there <laughs> i didn't have much to like represent like my socks i hope they matched or whatever it was you know but <laughs> I went there, I think it was a, at least a two-day tryout. So we just went and you played. You showed your stuff on the field and there was the realm of coaches and people watching everybody. And I think it was like the second or third to last to be picked for the team. You know, they just called the numbers. We had numbers on our jerseys. But I got chosen to the team and it was kind of like, there's a number of things, revolutionary revolutionary words that could come through. I don't know if swearing's okay, but internally that's what was going on. <laughs> like, wow. Like, I just really surprised myself that that was a jump, you know, and possible in that realm. And then was then, you know, surrounded by people who were, you know, so skilled and but it recognized that I belong there, you know. And so that really catapulted by, you know, in that particular realm of like, wow, that's possible. What else is possible? I'd say that was the first big one. That's awesome. Did that sense of confidence also translate to freestyle rap or did that come along later in your life? <laughs> when I spoke to some of the common threads that showed up in these different realms, like and specifically in freestyle rap, what I've just learned is like, can you, meaning myself, talking to self, can you get out of your own way? Can you get into a complete state of focus? And if that's possible, that's when you can just go beyond yourself, you know, and, and really show yourself a whole new level of experience and parts of yourself. So, you know, that happened on the soccer field. Yeah, it was like I was just, you know, fully focused. And then what happens? Like I'm in a fully reactionary state to, to the ball, to the game, to what's happening. In the same way, so like in freestyle rap, it's like, I know you know this personally too, but like the more you can get out of your own way, the more fun you're going to have, the more you're going to be creative and open. And, you know, I love like the science of that. And again, freestyle rap and like, what's the science of a flow state? Cause that's ultimately what I'm talking about and something that really connects all these bridges too. But, you know, the flow state is when you can drop out of your prefrontal cortex of your brain, the part of you that is self-judging, self-criticizing, aware of duality of space, time, your ego, all these aspects. And if you can dim that part of your brain and then it bring that into a single state of focus. It's like, I feel like we are exponentially more resourceful. So if that was in the soccer field, it was on a snowboard, if it was in a coaching session, you know, just with that intent, like, this is what I want to do. I'm going to put all my focus on this and then like let go and just be fully present to, to what's happening in the moment. And then that's where I think that, you know, one, those threads that all connect and yes, like the sense of confidence, like that was definitely an initial boost. And then it's like, kind of figuring out a bit of that formula, then it's just an art of practice. That's a beautiful description. And I definitely resonate with your description of the flow state. And for our audience, uh, Robbie and I actually met sort of freestyling, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which was how I know he happens to be such a phenomenal freestyler. And speaking of flow, you worked on a project called Tap the Flow. Can you talk just a little bit about that? Because I thought that was so interesting and such a great alignment of your personal values with your art. Yeah, sure. Happy to. And, and yeah, that was an epic meeting, Blake. That was like, <laughs> that was actually the highlight of my weekend. They were at a, a speaking event and learning there. But this moment, I just want to speak to you. It was great. This moment like where you and I and another piano player, we just got like vortex, like are magnetically pulled together. And like you were rocking beatbox as homies playing a riff on the piano and just started <laughs> letting some words go. And it was like, it was just a magic moment. So I'm really glad that like that particular moment has brought us to this one right here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So tap the flow. So it's actually called tap the flow 24. Tap the Flow is like my platform website where you know music coaching all that's involved. But Tap the Flow 24 is a project where it was really like kind of an answer to a prayer in a sense. Like I realized one of my greatest riches and resources in my life are the people that I know. And so many of them are just phenomenal artists. They're phenomenal musicians, they're incredible creatives. And not only that, but like where are their I say internal values and spirits are, we really just connect in this way. And I feel like it gives my life this richness. And I've also realized like, whoa, there's like just phenomenal potential here. And I work with people. There's seven people on my last, you know, mixtape just from my, you know, immediate circle. And, but what I realized is like, I want to, you know, oftentimes what we do, we'll get together. Maybe we'll, we'll just jam, right. Or get like a freestyle going on or whatever it might be. Cause you're on a fire or something like that. And sometimes it's like, that was 
perhaps one of the most epic things I've ever been a part of, right? <laughs> and it's for the moment, you know, the intention came through of like, what happens if we just get together and get the proper equipment together, meaning recording, get a producer on board, and in a 24-hour period, what can we create? What's possible? So the intention was to be to, to get a group of people together and in a 24-hour, create a song, an, an original song and video from scratch. So the videographer is on board, a producer who's strictly focusing on the music is on board. And then we do it. We conceive of it. We write it out. We record it. We complete it and then shoot a video for it in 24 hours. And then, so yeah, talk about like flow state. It's all about following your yes in that container. So we come out with this like, okay, this is in one day. Look what we have right here. And on the other side, what we're doing, what I'm doing with the, all the proceeds that are coming from this, which is through selling the songs on Bandcamp. And it's actually all moving towards a like an album release is coming March 22nd on World Water Day. All the proceeds are going towards an organization, generosity.org, who implements clean water systems globally. So, you know, the full circle aspect is that we are using this resource we have, meaning myself and, and this greater creative community, which is this ability to create music and, and inspire and co-create and collaborate. I feel like our cups are overflowing with, with that ability. And so to take that bountiful resource and redirect that and channel that into our art and then have that continue to move into a resource that's really needed globally, which is water. And it's something that I just really believe in. It's like, it's, it's not okay to me that people don't have access to clean water. It seems so silly because as this great mentor of mine says, it's not a lack of resources, it's a lack of resourcefulness. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I really believe in that. And so starting to weave the web of, you know, doing what we do naturally. And I think there's a, a certain magnetism. People can relate to music really quickly. You know, it either hits or it doesn't, but if it does, and, and you know, people can be inspired by that, maybe they're inspired to, to support this project and then really help make a difference globally too. That's wonderful. And we wonder what is the biggest dream that you have realized so far? And, and in what ways did you have to grow to achieve it? What's the biggest dream that I've realized so far? So am I still dreaming into it or something I have realized? Or <laughs> something that you have, something that you have realized. Yeah. Something I have realized. So I guess I can kind of go wide and then go narrow, but wide is that there's actually truth that if you believe it, it can happen. And I'd say that's more of a, you know, philosophy or understanding and really like it's actually a state of being, you know, like within the cells of your being, if, if that is your state, it's like, resources can show up, answers can come that you might not think are there. And so it's something I constantly am, am cultivating. I'm not saying I'm like in the masterful realm of this, but I, I definitely give focus to this um, quality regularly and, and ask myself about where I might be limiting myself in that regard. And then um, in terms of specifically, um, this project is definitely part of it. Like, how do I combine that which I love so much and have a deep impact? You know, this is definitely one of the answers in that regard. And people have been on board. People have been, there's probably 45 people who have been on board, you know, and just shown up to the nature of the project. And it's been amazing to witness that come together. And it actually hasn't even fully bloomed. So in terms of its potential, like I haven't even seen that yet because there's going to be a greater just release and, and push for people to, you know, learn about this more. That's such an exciting place to be in when you're, you're seeing the excitement build and then there's all of this amazing potential happening. Yeah, right. And then there's the aspect of like, you have to live with like, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know exactly how it's all going to turn out. All I can do, this is the humbling part, you know, and this is what I love to bring to the people I work with in a you know, coaching environment too, is like, all you can do is all you can do, you know? And I think there's a deep power in that and to like live in a space without regret and know that you've, you know, shown up fully. And then the world is what the world is. And, and, you know, I, I believe in serendipity in the way that magnetic forces can align and, and show up and, and be in support and connect you with people and be in the right place and the right time and all that. But you know, that's definitely the aspect of the mystery that, you know, is fully part of the, the equation as well. So for you, there is greater value in believing in the vision being possible and moving from that space so that you don't live with regrets and that you get to grow and meet people and all of these amazing things happen as a result, even if it's not what the vision is. Like for you, there's a greater value in the process 
of living your life that way than it being the exact outcome that you're wanting it to be. Right, right. Because then, you know, it's just like, it's the same kind of idea if you're putting your, the, the value or well-being of your life in someone else's hands, whether that's a partner or job or something else. It's like, it's just, there's something, something about just taking, <laughs> I think, into your own lap and saying like, this is, this is what I can do. And I'm going to enjoy the process. If you're not right, the simple, you know, catchphrase is the journey, not the destination. Like, okay, maybe I could be getting water to millions, if not like complete the entire water, you know, shortage crisis on our planet. Like that would be amazing. But like, if I don't enjoy myself along the way and, and really can, you know, appreciate the presence of a conversation, like right now, you know, enjoy the food that I'm eating, enjoy, you know, the meditation I have or whatever it might be, you know, sense that I'm watching, there's like a sense of like deep unfulfillment in that. And there's, there's a humbleness to that because how do you keep your, you know, you keep your drive and hold that while balancing to me, that's like, that's like mastery. That's a path of mastery working on that <laughs> and, and feeling, it, feeling, it, feeling it, feeling it more and more, you know? Well, speaking of mastery, like which of your accomplishments so far on your journey has surprised you the most? I'd say that probably rocking in front of a few thousand people has been a surprising moment. Like, like leaving the stage afterwards and being like, wow, that totally just happened. <laughs> <laughs> what was that event? Uh, that was a, it's actually happened a few times, but the first time that it happened, it was an outdoor concert in San Luis Obispo. I'd been playing with this band Tropo, who was an amazing electronic EDM, like elect live electronic dance music band. And then they would bring me in as a vocalist. So bring my thing and, and I purely would just freestyle with these guys. So they would just like build incredible energy and then it'd be like, get the IQ and then instantly like, cool, drop like a 16 or 32 or some <laughs> kind of um, chant piece that the crowd could get into. But we had a, you know, cool start, but then recognizing like, stepping on the stage and being like, this is a sea of people right here. And more just, I think just, you know, starting from, you know, awakening to freestyle and like what that outlet is and that it was something like just so fun. Like that was a particular instance of like, wow, I'm just this thing that I love. Here it is. This is just a whole different dynamic. And all these people are here. It's a beautiful, sunny day. It actually, it was like so hot that it melted the computers. Like, <laughs> <Whoa. mid> <laughs> <laughs> or like you just shut them, shut them right down. So that was another moment in that time too. We're like, yeah, the show is great. And, I, and like the mic still worked, but the computers fry. Like they had these coverings over them, but the heat went right through them and it turned it off. And all of a sudden they're like, tell Robbie, like, keep them going. <laughs> so I'm going to just, just do my best to engage the crowd and like get them to stay hyped and be like, yeah, we're working this out right now, you know. And ultimately, yeah, it was, it was a really just cool experience and a joyful moment of reflection afterwards of being like, wow, this is this is like a new plateau in terms of like engagement with this particular craft and then audience and, and the amount of people that can be enjoying and be touched in the same moment. Thank you for sharing that amazing story. We would love to hear a story about maybe one of the biggest challenges that you've faced so far and what it was like for you to overcome that challenge. Okay, great. That's an important part, right? Mm -hmm. That's, uh, <laughs> It's not all, all been a bed of roses for sure. I'd say that to start with a broader perspective too, and both really like the service work that I do and with music, it was the, the moment of really claiming that which I felt was looking to claim me for some time. And so, you know, I'll just speak to it through the music lens. I didn't grow up a musician. I didn't grow up a vocalist. Like I was, you know, sports was my thing. Snowboarding was my thing. It's very much like into the physical, you know, way of expression, you know, having more and more musical experiences and yeah, just like engagements and really just, just inspiring moments through it. I'm like, there's something to this, you know, there's, there's something I feel like beckoning me through this, but like, who am I? Like I look around and be like this one here that I'm maybe hop in for like a guest freestyle or something, you know, they've been doing their thing since they were six years old or five or whatever it was. And I'm starting this path in my late twenties or if not later, you know, just kind of like or even 30s. Like, I think I rocked my first show at 32. And so I'd say there was a point of just really questioning, like, kind of who am I to do this? And like, is this too late to be getting into this? And does any of that actually even matter? Does anything I'm doing really matter? Does it have some kind of future? You know, what forms of success could be involved in this? And like, 
really, there was a point of just kind of letting all of that go and just being like, this is part of me, like innately part of who I am. Granted, this like got unearthed from the wells within myself later in life than what I've seen in other people. But that doesn't mean anything, you know, I just recognize the, the genuineness of the place of where it was. And so there was a moment, there was a moment where I did really just commit to that and less with an outcome of needing anything specific to happen from it, but that I would show up to it. And it was at, it was after playing a big festival with that same band, Tropo, Lightning in a Bottle Festival in 2014. We just played, there's probably at least a thousand, maybe a couple thousand people there. And it was an amazing show and super fun and high energy and came off and, you know, eventually like saw some other music that night, late night and found myself just on a little solo walk. And I found, you know, I don't know if you've been to these kinds of festivals, but you, there's all kinds of nooks and crannies all around that you can find, you know, little gems of alcoves of spaces that are set with different intentions. And this particular one was like one where you can write where, so they had pens and paper and people wrote prayers and intentions and, you know, all the, all this kind of like self-reflective, like this very quiet zone. And I went in there and I just sat with like this feeling being like, okay, like music, you know, the gods of music, the Devi, the, the muses that are, you know, beckoning me and like served me on that stage right there and have walked with me thus far. Like, I just, like, I bow my head to you, you know, like there's, there's something that's greater in this that I know it's not just me. And that particular channel is something that resources me in a big way. And so I'm on board. I just wrote something that to me was really significant, but it was my like essentially just coming fully on board, coming to like a full yes of getting there. But there was, you know, a lot of in terms of like the challenge, there's so much, so much that showed up along the way. Now I know it's extremely normal and natural for any quote artist or anyone claiming what is their, you know, heart's calling or passion. Like it, you should be questioning that there should be like very likely, you know, or at least that reflective space. And for me, there was definitely lots of like, internal question and challenge and yeah just just kind of internal friction along that path until really that moment and then you know on the other side of that it's just like it's just I'm not questioning if I'm gonna do this or not you know kind of thing it's just like I'm just gonna do this the best I can that's where it is now you are such a great storyteller by the way I just every time you're telling that I feel like I'm there with you and and I I don't know it feels like a spiritual experience like I'm getting to relive it with you that's how I'm, how I'm feeling in <laughs> that anyway mm. and yeah I really appreciate you speaking to this I don't know this this perception that we have about I'm too something I'm too old I'm too young I'm too thin or what you know all of these things that we kind of have these perceptions or I don't know expectations that are put on to us by you know cultural or other means and to hear your story about that question coming up and then you just realizing that I have a higher vision and purpose and passion and love and that's more important to me than any of these doubts or things that are coming up about whether or not this is a gift that I am willing to give or and I think that's really inspiring mm. Yeah, just ultimately, it's like, you know, maybe for anyone else even listening to this, you know, if you can relate to that in your own way, you know, you think about like, what's the quality of life you want to lead, you know, and so if you put it black or white, either I follow it, or I don't, right? And following it may mean like, okay, you're welcoming this whole other field of challenges and problems, but I would take those any day versus the other ones where, you know, they're in the realm of like a regret or like, oh, you know, something mediocre. Like, you know, I think it's a blessing and I hope others see this. Like if you're following what you love, all the things that you face that are quote your problems and challenges with this podcast, what you guys are doing with schools and bringing the message and like timing and scheduling and all these things are very real and they show up, but like what a freaking blessing to be able to keep meeting those problems rather than like, Blake, like, where's my voice, right? Like, what, what is my message? Like, who am I to do this? Like, who are you guys to set up this podcast? It's like, who are you not, <laughs> you know? And like, I imagine you have your own journeys within that too. And, and what's on the other side of that is like, it's just so exponential. And this is what I keep seeing. And this is what I think is like this unspoken magic that's in there is that like, I'm sure you guys have helped touch kids in ways that have really formed and shaped their lives in a deep, impactful way. And I know I've gotten that reflection before too, in that sense where it's like, that wasn't exactly on my mind when I was say, writing this song, but 
I followed through, right? And put it out there, performed it or whatever it was. And it's like, that's, it just returns like cyclically energy to the fuel of being like, cool, there's, there's a point and a purpose to this. And I'm going to keep going further and, and with more depth. That's such a great reflection because there is this tendency to think, oh, my life is either going to be predictable and good and fine, or it's going to be trying to pursue the thing I love and, you know, starving and horrible and everything. But I think the thing people forget is life always will have its challenges, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. And life always has its blessings too. So to your point, Robbie, I think it's a question of if you can find or create or explore that path that really feels alive to you, then those are challenges that are so worth it because you're on a journey to where you want to go. You're going to have challenges even if you choose a predictable or mm-hmm. you know standard path as well. And something you said earlier, I wanted to ask you, uh, mentioned some of your lyrics. I was wondering if there are any of your lyrics that come to mind as you're talking about this space of claiming your power that you've written over the years that you feel kind of encapsulate this process for you. Yeah, you know, something does come to mind. One of the songs is called Knockin' the Infinite. It features my friend Carmen Crow, amazing vocalist. Um, and there's a piece of a manifesto at the end of it. Um, shall I share it? Yeah, please. That'd be awesome. Okay. I set forth from non-physical to live a life of miracle. Basis of empirical, experience the spherical. Learn to love the minimal, but focused on the integral. Sing a song of creation captured in the digital. Spread light where there's always been darkness. Put a song into the silence. Walk the path of an artist. Follow compass of the heart to the farthest while I'm giving thanks to the most high department. Mm. Yay. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> follow that compass. I love the imagery. That's, that's awesome, man. Thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's just like a pretty summed version. It's like, okay, I came from somewhere else. I'm landing here. I'm learning what's going on and follow it and, you know, do, do my best to be in gratitude along the way. That's some, some serious wisdom right there. And speaking of wisdom, is there any advice you would give to millennials who are on a similar journey towards fulfillment and success? Yes, definitely. In the, the in definitely deep words of Joseph Campbell, which is simply follow your bliss. But I'd like to add a little bit more to that because you might see that on a bumper sticker, right? Or you're, <laughs> Like, does that actually mean anything to you? You know, like, I've definitely, like, dissected what the heck does that actually mean, you know? Mm-hmm. And and it's, it's, it's an amazing distillation of so much, but there's immense truth to that. So, you know, to follow your bliss is, right, to follow your highest excitement. And, you know, that's not easy. That's that's what I'd love to like add is like get get over the fact right now that that's going to be easy or like blissful the whole time. It it may and very well will result like in the most phenomenal moments, like some of like just the pinnacle ones, you know, of your life that are just like snapshotted into eternity of like perfection. But along with that, there's so much to following through. So I'd say that you know, you might have like a question or throw a prayer out to the, to the universe. But if you get a response that it's just like, call this person, that may be the very next thing you're supposed to do. It's like, maybe it's not the biggest answer to what it is, but the act of doing and the act of following through is such an immense part of that. So it's like, Oh, I want to like travel the world and photograph for this. And it's like, okay, like photograph every single day. What resources do you really need to do the things you want to do? This is, I guess another really big part of following your bliss is learn to recognize what resourcefulness is. Because if you have, say, a vision, like, cool, this is my bliss, this particular direction. I want to study, like, mushrooms and, you know, heal, like, like eradicate the plastic in the ocean through it, which people are doing, by the way, and it's amazing. But that's, you know, someone's amazing blueprint, right? Like, they have that within themselves to do that. So, like, cool, how do you follow that all the way? So, what's the resources that you need, you know? I think people underestimate the power of the resourcefulness regularly. And I'm, I'm included in this because it's something I'm always looking to grow within that. But, you know, it's the idea of saving no money in your bank account. You need your car to get around. 
uh, you get four flat tires, you probably figure out pretty quickly how to get tires back on the car, right? It's like you just need to. You call somebody, you know, you take out a loan, whatever it is, you, you just make it happen, right? And then that same mindset that if you can enact your resourcefulness, it's like Steve Jobs, like the reality distortion field, right? That's what he they said, like he had so well, like he saw the unmanifest and would bring it into being just because it's like he distorted his reality to see it as so and then brought it into being, hence the iPhone, you know? And so in that same way, it's like we all have that potential, but there's the midpoints between like vision and following your bliss and then like actualization. And, and in between there, there's the art and the act of walking, right? Like following through and then dreaming wide, like with a very wide peripheral vision into resources of, you know, what are these different aspects that could really help that come into being? Because I think when we... If you can ask, like, is this possible versus, like, what are the specific things that I need? You're going to get a different answer. Mm. There's power in the questions that you ask. And one would enable you to say that it's possible and it's already done versus an answer of, like, no. And then how does that, you know, affect your internal world? And then if it is, it's like, how do I do this by the next three days? <laughs> your brain <laughs> will fire off resources to, like, give you that answer, you know? So is there an example of that kind of resourcefulness in your own life that comes to mind as you're talking about it? Yeah. So there's been an immense amount of resourcefulness in this Tap the Flow 24 project that we've spoken of. You know, I didn't really know any videographers along the way. And the first session that we did, I just put a post out on Facebook, like, hey, does anyone know a videographer? I've got this project I'm about to start here. And it had no traction. No one knew what it was. It was just a concept. And a friend was like, oh, they just like, they sent me a message with, they're like, give this guy a call with a name and a phone number. I didn't say anything else. I was like, okay. So I gave this guy a call and told him the nature of the project. It was like very, it was like maybe a two minute conversation. He's like, cool. So when and where? <laughs> and I was like, awesome. Okay. You're on board. Uh, <laughs> like, what was your name again? You know? And then he was, you know, like he's this pro badass videographer and he showed up, made a gorgeous video. You know, what I realized in that is that, wow, he was moved by the, you know, by the intention of the project and, and showed up. And then so for future ones, we've done eight or nine of these so far. You know, every time that I've reached out to artists or videographers, it's just like either, you know, knowing that the right person will be on board for this to align or they won't. But it will align, you know, like the project will keep going and moving forward. So you know, in terms of like recording studios, like I've been gifted, you know, a multi-thousand dollar recording studio because I asked for one of these sessions. And there's been so much of that, like the art of asking and just saying like, this is my intention. This is how I want to move forward. So I'm going to ask. And then it's either a yes or it's a no. Right. But knowing that, you know, for at least for all these different sessions, like those really did come through. That's such a blessing. And thank you for sharing. It is amazing to think of the power that we have and part of that is the power of community and making the ask, connecting with people and realizing that if we want to move something, it's like you're saying with the reality distortion field so often, it's possible. We just have to start. I think sometimes it can feel so overwhelming in part because there is a lot of possibility in the world and oh, I just don't know where to start, what to do. It's like start anywhere. Like the path will continue to reveal mm -hmm. itself. That's so cool. Thank you for sharing that. As we're wrapping up here, is there a book or a quote that has really changed your life? Yeah. So in terms of a quote or book, there's a lot, but I think maybe one of the ones that's been most impactful to my life and really opened some incredible doors was the Theta Healing book the first Theta Healing book. So Theta Healing is a, it's an energy healing modality that I've studied in and, and taught for many years and now integrated into my practice right now. But it's very rich. It's very content rich. You know, the nature of it is how to bring healing and transformation through this particular technique. But it really opened some doors. It really brought what I feel like is a very grounded structure to the vastness of our subconscious mind, the power of belief systems, how they influence our life, how they serve us. And understanding that, I'd say that I've also really learned like a lot of the art of listening, which is a lot more through practicing, you know, like so when working with other people. And in terms of like a foundational, like very eye-opening book, yeah, it's Theta Healing by Vianna Steibel. That's been a very impactful one for me. And 
given me a, a more grounded bridge into the vast realm of the metaphysical world and then how to turn that into tangible and practical experiences and transformation, you know, right here in our lives. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. I haven't read it yet and I, I would like to check it out for sure. Not to put you on the spot, but would you potentially be up for giving us a little freestyle? It could be about anything or or maybe about millennials, you know, any anything that comes to mind. How are you feeling about a potential little freestyle moment here? Sure, man. I'm open to it. And I know, I know, man, I want to, you know, to speak to your, watching your TED talk, I watched you pull off some magic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, here, here's my answer. Sure. And, you know, would you want to join me even like just trade back and forth a, a couple bars or something like that? Because it's not always that I'm in cyberspace of being able to do that. Is that something you're open to as well? Oh, totally. I, I only wish I just had air horns right now. So, we could, air, 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 you know, uh, <laughs> to, to, to kick it off. This will truly be a motivational millennial podcast first. Yes, absolutely. Let's let's do it. Let's let's tap the flow. Let's tap the flow. All right, cool. So let's just let's just trade some, you know, some bars back and forth and trust the right things coming through. <laughs> nice, nice. You want me to start? You want to start? Yeah, you can kick it off, man. All right, let me kick it off. We're chilling here at the podcast, celebrating, connecting to people just like the Comcast, Ooh. connecting through the interwebs, coming through your speakers. Listen to this podcast. Damn right, you're going to be a believer. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, check the feature. It. It's my man, Robbie. He came up here. It's like a big party talking about how you got to know yourself and tap the flow. Yo, that's good for your health because he's bringing the H2O across the globe. I mean, he's bringing the flow. So don't you know? I mean, check it out. He got the golden bars. Yo, that's the track I've been bumping. Yo, to Mars because it's out of this world. You get it? It's her interstellar. Yo, how I do it, I touch it like Helen Keller. Yes, best believe it. Yo, we can't achieve it. I be straight laughing, but yo, we won't leave it until I kick it back here. It's just like it's my hobby. So yo, these two bars are kicking back to Robbie. Uh. Yo, Robbie, bring it back. Yes, like I can handle this coming from Blake Brandis. Yeah, it's like a mantle. This is holding candles. Yes, to light it and spark it. Coming out of the dark, we bring light, illuminate the darkness. It's just the heart. Coming through while we're speaking like the beacon. It's not the weekend, but it almost is, kids. Yeah, and get your freaking. Yeah, that means true to yourself, whatever it is. Material wealth, spiritual wealth. They bring it together, the cards that were dealt. Two at a time, two for your mind, two for your body, and two for your soul. You add it up, it's a pie chart. Damn right, it's going to be whole. Whole like the black hole that we're all a part part of coming back it's just a part of this it's just a part of kiss that's the love the reciprocal energy that's coming between you remember we have been gifting lots of blessings across time lines lifelines and timelines we bring it together and our spines are connected to the earth root and part of the core we bring it back with that love what's another word or more Oh. You, yeah. Open the door. Oh, you guys are awesome. Oh, that was sick, dude. <laughs> I'm so glad I got to be a part of that. Thank you. Yo, Ivy, you got bars right now? No, oh my gosh. I've got hugs. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You'll drop some hugs on them. <laughs> so, Robbie, before you go, will you tell people how they can find you and your work? Yeah, sure. So if they connected, yeah, a number of different ways. One, Blake, that was dope. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, thank you for thank you for rocking and rolling with it. That was so dope. <laughs> yeah, man. I, you know, it's it's fun to do it. It's just so much more fun with somebody else, especially on point, man. Thanks for that. That was a joyful switching of the of the the brain focus. <laughs> 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 So you can go to tapthefloat.com. That's my, you know, personal platform that I bring my music and the Tap the Flow 24 project and the coaching world and, and how I offer through there. It's a good way to stay connected. Facebook, Robbie, R-A dot B-E. Uh, Instagram, Robbie333, spelled out R-A-B-E-T-H-R-E-E-T-H-I-R-T-Y-T-H-R-E-E. -E -E. All right. <laughs> And soundcloud.com backslash RA dash BE dash 333. And I got like 60, 70 tracks, close to 70 tracks available for free download there. So if you want to check out more of that, that's the place to get it. Dope. And would you be all right with us uh, playing Focal Finesse to close it out here? Oh, what an honor, man. Definitely. 
dope. We will we will put that on in the actual produced version when we have a high quality version in front of us. Oh man! Well, thank you so much. I just want to say shout out on that one to our good friend Carmen Crow, who I mentioned earlier in the podcast. She's the one singing the hook on there. So shout out to her. A lot of love to her as well. Sweet. Well, Ravi, thank you for being with yeah. us today. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Ivy, Blake, thanks guys so much for, for the time and the invite and much power, love and respect to what you're bringing out there and all the lives you're touching. Keep doing that. so deep yeah the light the dark the height the art that comes is so real free it's what i touch when i breathe after stormy seas it's all energy it hit me like a warming breeze yeah i want to go so deep yeah the light the dark the height the art that comes is so real free it's what i touch when i breathe after stormy seas it's all energy it hit me like a warming breeze yeah it's elementary sentimental the way the melodies elevate my mental memories what i've been through yeah i chop it like a ginza just to pick up all the info vision hit me like an intro to an odyssey the god of me is flowing like blood uh within my arteries it's part of me woven in every part of my arteries reflections of the farthest reach used to need to spark the leaf just to reach the heart of me but now i got tarot cards to read Insights to the depths, a fight to the death of the great white hype in my head It's got a fight to the breath, but a writing to the tense Past, present moment, help me grasp seven times 77 Light in my steps, best, be sight in the set I write to forget and catch a sight, a fresh point of vocal finesse Yeah, I've spoken with the vocal might in my chest The bottom line, I follow signs and all I find is a blast, yeah <laughs> Motivational Millennial Podcast is supported by Motivational Millennial Coaching Services. We help you find clarity and confidence so you can take action toward living your dream life. To learn more about one-on-one personalized support from someone who believes you have a path to fulfillment and wants to help you uncover it, visit motivationalmillennial.com slash coaching. Hello and welcome to the after show for our conversation with Robbie. Oh my gosh, those were some epic rhymes. Well, I can never promise anything with a freestyle, but it's always fun to just trust <laughs> the flow and see where it goes. Yeah, you guys are awesome. I, I was going to be like, wickety wickety what? <laughs> That's what I can do. I was your hype woman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, oh, Robbie's a dope freestyler. Yeah, I was, I was incredible. I was really impressed. So amazing. There was a lot of wisdom in this conversation. And one of the pieces that stood out to me the most, you know, it kind of struck me in a really interesting way. It was when he was talking about his biggest dream. And he was he was talking about how it's really around having this mindset and cultivating this mindset around believing in possibility. And he was saying, if you believe it, it can happen. And so really this practice of visioning to reality and how it's about your frequency and your energy and all of these things, that the more you tune your frequency into the vision and dream that you have and come from that frequency, the more opportunities and doors will open and things will fall into place more easily if you come from that perspective. It's so interesting that this struck me and it isn't because it's, um, it's like new to me really, but you know, whenever you, it's just life, you know, like you hear the same things over and over again. And sometimes like you could read the same book over and over again and like different things are going to pop out to you at different times for Mm -hmm. different reasons. And for me, I think this popped out at me at this time because I don't feel like I, am embodying that as much as I have at other times in my life right now. I think that I've gotten, like, I think I've gotten really focused on the logistics of everything from, you know, the certification program to just building all of these little things. And I've been so focused on each of those little pieces that I haven't been going back and really connecting to the vision, not just the vision that I have for the company, but really the vision that I have for my life in order to have that consistent belief that things will 
happen if you really believe in them. You've got to have some clarity around what it is that you you want. And it's so interesting how like you can have clarity for a while and then you move toward that. And unless you're like conscious, like he's cultivating this practice regularly, then you can kind of lose focus. And so it struck me because I just I'm not resonating at that wavelength and I kind of miss it. So it's great. He puts that back on my radar. <laughs> hmm. And that's funny, too, because I was actually before before you said that you had been so focused on the logistics. One of the things I was going to say that I think having that clarity of vision does is it helps align your actions. And I guess it's sort of saying the same thing, but but to your point, like you can be focusing on the, on the logistics, but not necessarily going in the direction of a specific vision. And so it can feel like getting bogged down in the logistics. Yeah, because I can get a lot of stuff done. Mm -hmm. And we can all get a lot of stuff done. Like that's what it means to not have that clarity because you can be working for years in a certain direction. And if you're not paying any attention, you know, you're feeling kind of lost or stuck or whatever. So I think it's pretty normal to still be like functioning and doing, <laughs> focusing on the logistics, just not necessarily in service of your bigger vision and dream because there's not necessarily that awareness. And, and again, those dreams change. Mm -hmm. That's a good distinction too between say vision and goals, for example, because I think the vision is that picture of how you want your life and the world to look. And the yeah. goals are like individual components of how to make that thing happen. So it's sort of operationalizing the vision. Yeah, and I think that as you reach goals, the vision starts to take shape in a different way because mm -hmm. you get a new understanding of yourself and you get a new understanding of what's possible as you reach certain goals. I mean, think about it. When you graduate from high school, you know, you have a, this vision of, the American dream, like buying this house or whatever, you know, you have like financial security is this vision. You're like the first step, go to college. Okay. Then college happens. And then it's like, by the end, you know, it, you, you reevaluate what your actual vision is for me. Like my vision when I started college was like, I just know that I want to like have stability. Then I went through college and got my master's degree and my vision of life and stability and what I wanted out of it changed because six years had happened. Right. You know, <laughs> and like I'd accomplished all these goals, but it was like, oh, what does the future of my life actually look like for me in this moment? Yeah. And I think not having a vision, it can feel frightening in some ways or confusing. And also, I think it can be a great place of creativity and possibility yeah. if there's a lack of clarity. I mean, when I graduated from college, just as you're thinking about those life touch points, I didn't know what I wanted to do or who I wanted to be. I mean, I had an inkling that maybe I would want to work for or create some nonprofit or NGO that helps kids mm -hmm. using music in some way. But I didn't have that crystal clear vision. Oh, yeah, I'm going to form a nonprofit. And here's exactly what we're going to do. And here's the time frame. And so that's something I actually coach students on when they're applying for college or jobs or scholarships. And I just often tell them, look, you just have to put together what is your best guess based on where you are right now and the things you care about and the issues you care about in your ideal world? What is something that you could plausibly be interested in? And so if you don't have that crystal clarity, then just do the next best thing and move towards that goal until you either get more clarity on that path or see another path that makes more sense to you. And having that vision is one piece of the puzzle but the other piece is believing that the vision is possible mm -hmm. and that's what Robbie is talking about right he's like I am cultivating that if I believe it's possible it's going to be much more likely to happen you know like it can really happen if I consistently come from that place and I think that for me in some ways is I don't know I, I always am driven by that. So there's a part of me that's like, that's naturally like, I, I do believe that things can happen when you really, like, that's the only way they can happen, mm -hmm. actually, is if you believe it's possible. Otherwise, you just have these limiting beliefs, you talk yourself out of it, and you have fear and all these things. Yeah. And so, you know, that's been really helpful. But I, I really kind of want to, for myself, just cultivate that combination of of a clear vision moving forward and then cultivating that uh, resonant belief. Yeah. And that actually brings me to the point I wanted to talk about, which was Robbie's tap the flow 24 project, mm. because that's a great example of exactly that creating this really complex project with all these different people 
in such a short time frame, it only works if everyone believes it's possible. Because, mm. you know, otherwise, oh, we don't have enough time to find location. Oh, we don't have enough time to shoot all the video we need. Oh, we don't have enough time to record everything. And so it's great that he had such a powerful example built around a cause he really cares about and believes in, and specifically about water, access to water for people across the globe. And the output was a beautiful, amazing song and video. So I think giving ourselves those creative boundaries can really help clarify that vision because sometimes I think the vision can be so vast. Like, we want to inspire all millennials to live a fulfilling life. Like, whoa, okay, bro, like, that's a huge vision. So how about, you know, we want to... <laughs> <laughs> whoa, bro. <laughs> Slow down there, Tony Robbins Jr. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's much easier to say, as we were starting out, okay, we want to work in public schools and support students to embrace the growth mindset to succeed in their educational career and in their personal lives. Like that's a much more narrow frame. And now with Motivational Millennial, you know, we are working on a program right now specifically at helping students who might be interested in entrepreneurship and small businesses to gain the personal skills and professional skills that they need to succeed. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that that narrowing of the vision or getting more clarity around the vision happened because we started. You know, if you have this expectation that you are going to have a perfect clarity and certainty before you start something, then you, you were ne we never would have started if we were if we didn't start with the whoa, bro, like vision oh, yeah. of helping all millennials have a felt like that was where we started because that was pretty narrow for us at the moment, <laughs> you know, and then we started to move forward. And I think just knowing that if we had just said, OK, this isn't narrow enough or this isn't clear enough, like we have to wait. We could have sat there on our laurels for six months or something, you know? That's right. That's right. The laurels are an easy place to sit. I don't know why that phrase. I just <laughs> watch Arrow. People who watch Arrow, the Arrow, are going to know what I mean by that. Is there a character named Laurel who gets sat upon a lot? No, she doesn't get sat upon, but there is a character named Laurel. Are there jokes about sitting, resting on your laurels? No, but I just read it in this book, <laughs> I think, and then I realized that laurels were a plant, and I was like, holy mackerel, there's a new plant name I can put into my archive of potential future progeny names. <laughs> I'm always thinking of more plant names. <laughs> Don't you think Laurel LeClaire is a pretty cool name? <laughs> well, that does sound like something to be in a fantasy novel. It's true. <laughs> Anyway, we digress <laughs> severely. Um. Yeah, but I mean, you know, returning to Ravi, I think you're right. His journey really speaks to that idea of focusing the energy in that flow state. And, you know, he didn't know when he was playing college athletics that he would eventually end up necessarily being a professional artist and energy healer and all these different mm, aspects yeah, of his exactly. current personality. But mm -hmm. he trusted and believed in that vision and followed it um, through the different stages. So I think what you said is worth really honing in on, too, that we crave certainty mm -hmm. in all its different forms. And especially before starting something new or trying something or even just reaching out. And there's a difference between... Having the certainty of doing your homework, quote unquote, or doing enough research to actually know what you're talking about. And then there's the attempt to gain absolute indefensibility in the sense of like, <laughs> I have so much preparation and so much knowledge that no one can ever say anything that could possibly contradict me or defeat me or there's no way I could possibly lose. And like... That's a decision that has to be made internally because there are never enough courses, there are never enough books, there are never enough resources that you can truly have to feel absolutely secure if you don't build and grow that security from within yourself first. Wow, you have a lot of energy around this. <laughs> it's true. It's one of the things I've been working around and, and trying to focus on not stopping myself. <laughs> Very passionate. Thank you. Well... In addition to never having truly enough resources, we also don't have enough time 
in the world. Although I'm sure we could produce a two hour long podcast. I'm not sure how many people would stick around <laughs> for endless pontification. You gotta come so. from the abundance mindset. And That's right. There are more opportunities a- <laughs> out there and we'll have a chance to dive deeper into this one in a future conversation. So thank you all so much, our awesome listeners. Thank you to Robbie for being a dope human in addition to a sick MC. And again, check out his Golden Bars mixtape. It is fire, as the kids say. <laughs> it's lit. It's <laughs> is it lit still a thing on fleek. <laughs> uh, on fleek, I think is passed. Oh but, crap! <laughs> but, but lit is still lit is still there. Wow, the kids are still lit. getting things lit. That's. Yeah. Which has been around for a while. Well, it's a return. I think it was big back in the day. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And now it's lit. It's Maybe it has a different meaning, like a slightly different nuanced meaning. I think so. Yeah, I think it <laughs> comes from the idea like a sort of world star. I don't know if you know world star. It's like the world star hip hop where they post videos of people fighting. I think there's a whole idea of like somebody, you know, throws out an insult and was like, oh, it's lit. Like, you know, it's about to go down. Like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And now it's also like the party was lit. And anyway. Thanks for that uh, <laughs> you, lesson. You come to the Motivation of Millennial <laughs> podcast for all your slang and uh, other jargony needs. <laughs> uh, certainly plenty of personal development jargon anyway. Oh. Well. All of the learnings. All the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're, we're out of Thank here. You all. Peace and love, friends. Catch you soon. For show notes and upcoming guests, or to learn more about Coactive Coaching, the blog, and our other awesome offerings, visit motivationalmillennial.com. Keep in touch with us at facebook.com slash motivationalmillennial. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us an email with your thoughts, comments, and suggestions at podcast at motivationalmillennial.com. And tell us who you might like to hear from, or if you think you or anyone you know would be good for the show. The Motivational Millennial Podcast is edited by Christy Hostler and Team Podcast. Our theme music was composed and performed by Blake Brandis. Have Have a great great week, week, Motivational Motivational Millennials. Millennials!